Turns out it's rather hard to film in snow and rain. We're constantly having to protect the camera. That's exec producer Alex. And poor old Jack is constantly cleaning the front. <laughs> This is the Solheimer Jökull Glacier in Iceland, one of almost 270 that define the landscape, and in fact the name of this volcanic island in the North Atlantic. Glaciers like this cover a tenth of the planet's land surface, and with 24 million cubic kilometres of water locked up as ice, that's 70% of the planet's fresh water in them but they're receding. Take Solheima Jokl, for example, and what it exposes is potentially interesting and more worrying than just water. And although it may look harmless enough, this ice could be hiding a deadly secret, cryogenically preserved bacteria and viruses that could be hundreds of thousands of years old, dating from the same time that mammoths and saber-toothed cats roamed the planet. In fact, thanks to the way it forms, glacial ice is pretty good at preserving ecological and environmental collisions. As snow falls, it traps air, water and living things, well, recently living things. And then as more and more snow falls over the years, those layers get compacted and they form solid ice and they trap that water, that air and that biological material in place. The further you go down the glacier, the older stuff gets, so at the top, couple of decades old, but as you go further and further, those layers, that biological material, thousands of years older. And it's trapped down there right now, nothing to worry about. But when it starts unfreezing, that's when it could get scary. In a remote part of Siberia in 2016, a 12-year-old boy died and lots of other people were hospitalised because they were infected by an anthrax bacteria that likely came from a long-dead reindeer that had thawed out of the permafrost. Now, permafrost forms very much like a glacier, but it's about frozen soil. Layers and layers of soil building up over time, over years, freezing in place. So the further down you go, the older that stuff is. The top layer will likely melt and thaw in summer, but the deeper layers stay frozen in almost a cryogenic stasis. The problem is that with the Arctic experiencing warmer and warmer temperatures, permafrost is melting to a deeper and deeper layer, and scientists are worried that the anthrax from that long dead reindeer could just be the tip of the iceberg. With permafrost melting, it may start uncovering the graves of smallpox, Spanish flu, bubonic plague victims, and possibly the pathogens that killed them. So yet another impact of continued global warming, those 18th and 19th century diseases that we thought we'd seen the back of, yeah, maybe not. Although permafrost could preserve microorganisms that are a few hundreds of years old, glaciers like Solhoma Yuckel here could be preserving pathogens that are way, way older. And some scientists think that there'd be a way to revive them. Amazingly, they have been able to repeatedly revive inactive and dormant bacteria that are hundreds of thousands of years old. The ones that our ancestors, Homo erectus and Neanderthals, would have been exposed to. And in one amazing case, a bacterium dating back eight million years was revived from its icy slumber. What's really scary is that us modern day humans have never had to face these primal microbes, so we just don't know what they would do to us. One shred of hope though is that the bacteria that are particularly adept at surviving this cryogenic process tend to live in cold environments, so it's very unlikely that they would thrive in our warm-blooded bodies. So you don't need to be worried then about being infected by an ancient super virus. Well, sadly, I'm not done yet. The release of microorganisms from melting glaciers could have another unexpected effect. All right, get this. The sheer quantity of microbes locked up in the ice caps and glaciers all around the world is thought to total more than 1,000 times the biomass of all the humans on Earth. It's spring here in beautiful Iceland, as you can tell, because I got my gloves on, my hat, and about five or six layers. But what we're seeing is chunks coming off the glacier and being blown and pushed down the rivers to the sea. But with continued global warming, this could happen more and more, and the biomass that it contains could severely disrupt the aquatic ecosystems. Even if they're not alive, all that bacteria represents a whole source of new nutrients in the ocean. That's likely to cause a big planktonic bloom microscopic floating algae proliferating in one concentrated area, using up the oxygen in the water, which means that fish and other oxygen breathers wouldn't be able to survive. 
So perhaps there's little to be worried about from the potential pathogens in the ice. They need to be revived. They need to be able to survive in our warm bodies and need to actually be harmful to us. The world, the planet faces a much bigger problem thanks to continued global warming. Right now, the Arctic is warming three times faster than some other places around the world. And if that warming continues, then glaciers like Solheim Jokl here will continue to melt and we may need to get used to things emerging from the ice. Do you fancy coming on an adventure like this? If the answer is yes, and I'm sure it is, then you need to check out this video because we have just launched the BBC Earth Presenter Search 2018. Also, have a look at all the other videos that we've been making here in incredible Iceland. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do hit the notification bell. You'll be the first to hear about our latest videos. Um, if you do win that, by the way, make sure you pack warm stuff because it is incredibly cold.